But anyhow, we are quickly going to crack open the bottom. You'll notice I've got the screws taken out on the bottom so we can service the gear case. Another great design by the uh, TLR team over there. So very simply, you take the screws out. You can use a small screwdriver and a blade or a blade. Just try not to... You don't got to go and dig in there. You can just kind of work it around. It's a good fit though. So there you go, big old glob of grease in there, the grease they use, at least it's a grease in this one, it's not that mystery sauce like we had in the SCX6, so we're going to clean that out, uh, it's not doing anything sitting on the cover. Uh, we do have a liberal amount in there, very happy with that, Lossy didn't uh, skimp out on us there, so uh, we're just going to clean up a little bit of that, we're going to add some cow RC in there, some nice uh, little bit looser grease that is winter time here and this stuff will get thick and stiff uh, on a cold day about trailing and running around with it. So, okay guys, we fairly got it, yeah, good enough English, we fairly got it cleaned out enough in there, um, good enough for now without taking everything out, dismantling it. We're going to hit that with our Utter Butter Super Waterproof Grease and make this guy run a lot smoother, quieter, and with winter coming, a lot smoother. Make sure you check out calrc.com, grab yourself some utter butter for all your building needs. Where's that cover? Okay, two screws back in there. We are going to pop open this side cover and just make sure that everything is nice and greased in there and the truck goes back to the client, my buddy Jared running the camera tonight and uh, it's going to be fine, nice, quiet, run smooth and not blow up when it leaves here and then I get blamed for being a faulty mechanic or something. So. Okay guys, so proper maintenance on these LMTs after doing the differential while we're doing a full grease treatment. You're going to want to open up this guy. Basically, your transfer case, I guess I would say. Kind of not really, sort of. Push drive, nice. And I think there's poo in there. A little bit of rust or something? No, that's poo poo. <laughs> yeah, the grease they put in there is uh, not good enough. Okay, so this guy here um, has these three fingers here, and the power comes down against this rubber block, hits these things, and the power gets transferred through this guy onto the square shaft out into the transmission. It's pretty cool setup because this takes a lot of the abuse out of the uh, um, the drive line, so you can really land on the wheels on the power and stuff. You're not going to blow stuff up. So very cool, very cool design. I see the Kush drive in there. I believe Trax is uh, designed it, so don't tell them. They'll start suing people again. So, God damn it, Trax. Cool. Now, if I didn't know better, I would say that this is missing a, a, a clip off the end of it. If I wasn't a betting man myself, I'm going to have to find... A parts manual but I do see can you see what I see you see that little notch on the groove on the shaft you see that can you see that right there yeah I'm almost sure that should have a e-clip holding this pack together because right now you're using the outer case bearing to hold that pack together so uh, we need to do some investigation best way to start that is to Okay, it's apparently not in there so far, but uh, good find. Sit tight for a minute. We need to do some investigating and find out if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. I think they might have missed it from the factory, but we're going to need to get one on there, I think. But we'll check a manual. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we dumped out um, our e-clip collection, and we found one to fit the shaft. It turns out it was actually missing and gone. 
Uh, we took off the top part of the cover of the transmission there so we can get up in there and check everything, make sure everything was out of there. There was no clip stuck in there, it didn't get mulched in the gears, wasn't just kind of hung up in the grease, waiting to cause a problem. While I'm in there, I'm going to crank the motor screws in and make sure they are locked in, which they are. And we're also going to adjust the pinion gear. If you turn it to the top, there is a little groove in the top of the transmission. You can get your driver down in there, right through here, to make sure that guy is good and tight. And again, perfect. Everything is locked up tight in there. So we can put that guy back together. Now we are confident it's not going to fly apart on us. There's idler gear in the middle. Put the shaft in the hole. Drop that guy in. Your main drive gear on the bottom sits on the bearing. Make sure you don't lose that bearing on the bottom. Make sure your cush drive stays in. I don't know if we can call that legally cush drive, but yeah. It only fits in one way, so make sure you get that in there. And then yeah, we're gonna snap a E-clip on there now. You kinda have to load the drive, push it down. You can see there, pushing out my fingers. Sorry guys, not the greatest angle tonight. And we snap that in there, boom, done. You wanna make sure that ring stays in. You take a screwdriver, and you give it a spin in the track and it should rotate around. That's how you know it's not gonna fly out. If you can't spin it in the groove a couple times, then redo it. You need to be able to slide and that way you know it's not gonna come out, it's sit, it fits in there. It fits in there so damn good, it's like that was the missing clip. So we can put our cover back in, start with the top piece. Uh, we just kind of bent this side thing out of the way to get the screw in without having to take everything else apart. And it does have this little finger that grooves into the top that will help keep the dirt and everything on the top. Just make sure that guy fits in nicely before you put the screw in. Boom! Okay, so, um, yeah, basically, there you go. Before I close this up, I'm gonna put the top one in. We're gonna cow RC, under butter this guy all to heck, and get him ready to go. Again, we'll catch back here in a second. We're gonna throw the rear sway bar on. Okay guys, there you go. We've got the LMT, king of all monster trucks, back to a slider, sitting on the uh, Amazon axles that Jared had ordered, asked us to install for them. We went through, gave it the full cow RC utter butter treatment front to back. Um, we checked the gear mesh best we can with the setup it is. Everything feels great front to back. We did find that one issue inside the transmission with that missing E-clip on the cush drive. So we got that tucked away in there. We loaded that up with some Cow RC Utter Butter. Again, the drive line sounds just, just buttery. Buttery smooth, sounds just great. Utter buttery smooth on it. So absolutely fantastic. Uh, we are now gonna tackle the sway bar on the rear. Um, I love these sway bar designs, but this thin piano wire rod, these are all bent already and they do like to break. They are easy to fix, but um, Jared had ordered one of Amazon to try a different route. So he's got these beefy dudes here. You've got the arms that come off the frame, your sway bar links that run back. They look good, nice and machine uh, billet pieces. You have the links that run down to the axles. The only thing that I see that could be a future problem is these brass pushed in inserts that hold in these um, rod ends. These are infamous for coming out. This would have been totally fine to leave with a plastic rod end and a stainless link in between or something because the plastic takes a lot more of the constant abuse. These things, when you're ripping your LMT through the grass, whatever, the vibration that travels up through all your parts, especially these, is just immense. So what it does is it will pop that brass collar out fairly quick. We'll keep the stock parts for when those do come apart because they're gonna come apart, mark my word on that. So, But we'll put them on because they look good for now. These are the guys, with the dudes that go into the frame. You get a, what's the bearing called that's got the shoulder thing on it there? What are those called, Jared? I just bought some last week. Hmm, can't remember the name. Flanged bearing. There we go. 
I think that's what it's called, flash bearing, right? Yeah, that's it, yeah, I think they're getting old. So bearings will go into the frame, these guys will pass through into the bearing, these guys, which is your sway bar, the big fat guy now, which is nice, they actually double the size of it, so it'll actually work really well. These guys go into there, this guy goes over here, and then you drop in, side up here, there's a little bit and then you drop in a big set screw pin that locks it all together like that. So pretty cool. And the link goes down to the axle. This is my drawing with my hand. So yeah, we're going to uh, quickly get into that. To do that, we're going to have to take off one of the end side frame rails. So we're going to start with the passenger side rear frame rail as this would be the rear one. Uh, we're going to demo it for a little while, see if it does hold up, how quick it lasts. If it falls apart quick, we'll go back to the stock one, but I'm going to shut up and we're going to get the truck back up to that. Okay guys, so the best plan of attack is this, is you're going to have to take out the two screws for the back of the radio tray and then there's two screws in the front. Take the radio tray out and then you can get in from the top to get to the bolts on the inside of the plate. There is two bolts there we have to get out. You can pull out the screw on the shock back here, which I've already started, and then take off the two screws that can do the cross member. And then there's six more screws here you gotta take off. Take that plate off, do your swap, put it all back on. It's fairly simple. Let's get at it. Take out your bushing on your shock, because you're gonna lose it if you don't. A bushing piece like that. Take that out. They always like to disappear and they're very hard to find on their own. Radio Box does have a nut on the back side of the tray, but it does have it does have a slot on the box to hold the nut in place, but it will fall out after you pull apart. Now there's two screws in the front. They put those screws underneath the other screws and, uh, well, that's a quick way to do it. <laughs> Pain in the butt. Okay. Now let's open. There's a screw here, a screw there, and take the ones off in the back. We're gonna pop back in a second once we have that all apart. Okay guys, we've got all the screws out, ready to go. So now you can just take off your rear quarter plate pop up the stock guy on his bushings. He's not going anywhere. We're gonna keep that guy just in case the this one fails. Okay guys, so after you remove that um, stock sway bar shaft and links, you can actually put your frame piece back in. Line everything up. Make sure he goes on the inside. There you go. Okay, make sure you get it in the right spot the first time around. Okay guys, so flange bearing comes in from the outside. I would have kind of designed this a little bit differently if this was my design, but this is their design. So let's figure this puzzle out really quick. Your rod ends, I guess we'll call them. Run like so. You can put your shaft through. Now, when we kind of measured this up, we've noticed it was just a little short, so. Now. So final assembly pretty much is gonna look like this. Nice clean finish. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have the flat side up, which is a nice way to go through so you know your orientation is assembled to one side, pass it through and then put the other side on. So that gets a three millimeter lock screw or three millimeter screw in the top, lock that down tight. And it also has a clamp on the back. And that will be, the one that goes in there is a three by, uh, three by five mil. And this one is a three by eight for the back locking. The fatter side is the thread side. So if you put it in from the wrong side, it is also angled too. You should be able to figure out that it's wrong, but just in case. So we can lock that down. So now 
we know the orientation we put the other side on to make sure we have the flat the shaft hitting flat so you don't actually tighten it up on the wrong angle and then it comes loose right away. Okay, boom, put that on. And we can slap this side in there, on there. The extra thing, the, slot, the extra bearing race takes up the slot too, right? Oh, just Yeah, I'm actually gonna put this piece together, line up my holes first, and pop this guy in. Just make my life just a little bit easier trying to line everything up. And then if I bring this guy in a downward dog direction, I should be able to run. It'll fall off the wall. Run a screw from the back, and then we can finagle that tight real quick. So it's a little three by five mil. Come on, Jeez. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I am liking that. All I need to do is finish linking up these links. We're going to take out these plastic ones, but remember, we're going to keep them for when these uh, fancy aluminum ones give out on us, but we are going to run them for the meanwhile, and we'll just hang on to these. So yeah, basically swap, hook that up. Fairly easy install, nice and clean looking. Now again, there's nothing wrong with the front one. Uh, you might break some of these rods, but you can change those. You can buy a pack of those and change those out on the trail pretty quick. Uh, this rear one is pretty sturdy. I am not concerned about seeing it break. I kind of wasn't liking the design of it, how I think things should be designed, but it works. It works good. I don't really see too many issues. I kind of would have ran a shaft through the middle and shared the load over top both the bearings equally instead of having most of your load outside of the bearing and not much on the inside, like they're flush on the inside, right? But I could be wrong, that's just how I think, right? So, but anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna put the battery box in, we're gonna hook up those links, and uh, we're pretty much gonna call it on this build. Uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys later on in the next video.